Day trading taxes. Everybody wants to know how to make money, but not a lot of people know how taxes work when it comes down to day trading. We're gonna talk about day trading taxes in this video, so make sure you guys stay tuned. What's going on guys? So today we're talking about day trading taxes and I wanna make it very clear that I am not a professional tax person by any means. So whatever I say in this video, take it with a grain of salt until you go out and you talk to a professional. If you have real questions and you're wondering about your personal taxes, please, please go out there and find a professional who is actually certified and knows what they're talking about. But let's just talk about day trading taxes and how it works. So basically the way that the IRS looks at taxable income when being a day trader is that as a day trader, the money that you're making is like you're self-employed. So you're like a 1099 contractor in the sense that you don't really have a boss, you're not really paying in social security, you're not paying this stuff, but you're making income. There's income coming into your account, right? So you're making money as a day trader, so you gotta pay taxes on that. So let's talk about how that works. First off, if you are a trader, a normal just trader slash investor, and you make a lot of trades, the maximum amount of money that you're allowed to deduct for your losses is only $3,000. So if you lose $10,000 in the first year of your trading journey, you're only allowed to deduct $3,000 per year as net capital losses. So that's something to think about. If you're losing a lot of money and you're planning on writing that loss off at the end of the year, you can only write off $3,000 maximum as a loss, okay? Remember that, think about that. Now, another good thing is you are allowed to deduct things like margin account interest, you're allowed to write off your computer, your internet, all the stuff that comes with being a day trader. Because remember, you're a self-employed person as a day trader, so you're self-employed and you're allowed to write off a lot of the expenses that come with being a self-employed day trader. Like I said, computer, your internet, whatever you're basically using to make money, your, maybe your office, things like that, depending on how your house or your office or however that's set up. Remember, talk to a professional before you go and do these things, but like I said, you're allowed to write off a lot of the expenses that come with being a day trader. Now, a lot of people talk about mark to market traders. If you qualify as a trader, the IRS has a deal for you. Under normal circumstances, when you sell a stock for a loss, you get to write off that amount. But if you buy within 30 days before or after you sell, the IRS considers this a wash sale. Now, you have a tax accounting nightmare to handle with at that point. Fortunately, you can become what is called a mark to market trader meaning that you will automatically become exempt from the wash sale rule. Now, here's how mark to market works. On the last trading day of the year, you pretend to sell all of your holdings, if any. Even though you still really hold the stocks, you book all the imaginary gains and losses of that day for tax purposes. You then begin the new year with no unrealized gains or losses, as if you had just bought back all the shares you pretended to sell. Being a mark to market trader has no other advantage. Being a mark to market trader has another advantage. Normally investors, like I said earlier, or traders can only deduct $3,000 in net capital losses per year. But a mark to market trader can deduct a unlimited amount of losses which is a plus in a really awful market or a really bad year of trading. As a mark to market trader, you should be, you are allowed to report your gains and losses on your part two of IRS form 4797. So that's an option. Again, I would talk to a certified professional accountant and learn more about that. I think it would be a really kind of good way to do it and learn if you can qualify for the mark to market exemption so you don't have to worry about the wash sale rule <clears throat> and
and remember there's a lot of paperwork and a lot of issues but let's talk about like how does it actually work you know what's the deal with being taxed all right so let's look at it like this so basically your long-term your short-term investor long-term investments those are held for more than a year they are taxed so let's look at it like this. You have long-term investments and short-term investments when it comes to trading or investing. Let's look at it like this. Long-term investments are those investments that you hold for more than a year, and then short-term investments are less than a year. And the longer term, when you hold a stock for more than a year, that is a long-term investment, and it qualifies as a long-term tax rate in terms of having it for longer versus the regular tax rate. So let's say, you make over $500,000 a year with long-term investments. Those are stocks you hold for over a year. Your tax rate is going to be 20%. Now, if you're making money in the short term and you're buying and selling stocks every single day, you're not holding long-term, that tax rate for over $500,000 a year is gonna be 39.6%. Again, make sure you check with a certified professional accountant before using all this. But just for example, let's say you make you know, $9,000 to $37,000 a year, your tax rate is gonna be 15% of that profit paying to IRS. Now, if you make $90,000 to $190,000, that tax rate is gonna be 15% for a long-term tax rate, and for a regular short-term tax rate, you're gonna be paying 28%. Again, we already talked about capital losses. If you're trading, with a normal investor profile, you can only write off $3,000 in taxes per year. All right, so you might have heard about people trading in a IRA account. How does that work and why would you do that? The reason that people day trade in a IRA account is because it allows you to defer or avoid taxes on dividends and capital gains. All of your profits can be reinvested tax-free. And some of the restrictions about using an IRA account is that there's rules with the IRS, which means you're not allowed borrowing from an IRA account. This means no short selling and leverage using margin in the sale of naked or naked put or call options. Some brokerage firms allow you to trade different ETFs and vice versa based on how much money you're making from maybe your nine to five job or if you have other money that you're making your taxable income is basically just gonna be absorbed into that and then added up at the end of the year and it's gonna adjust with your tax rate and vice versa. So it's basically like having a second job and being a self-employed contractor for that job. So imagine the stock market is like a business that pays you and you're a 1099 contractor, you're taking that income in and then you're paying those taxes at the end of the year based on how much money you make. So if you make a ton of money, obviously you're gonna be paying a lot in taxes. If you make no money at all, don't worry about it. You're not gonna be paying a lot of taxes on that. So it's very kind of vice versa and depending on how you're trading and learning about all that as well. So make sure you spend more time kind of talking to a professional. If you're making a lot of money, you should definitely talk to a professional. If you're just starting out, just keep in mind how it works and kind of learn more about that overall process and also maybe learn more about if you are able to qualify for the mark to market exemption with the IRS, so you don't have to pay the wash sale rule. So a lot of things to learn about. I've heard about people having nightmares before where they end up making a ton of money trading and then at the end of the year, they end up owing a lot of money because they had a lot of wash sales and they had a lot of stuff going on. So you need to understand how that works. And again, like I said, if you're a normal trader and you're not qualified for the mark to market exemption, then you will only be able to write off $3,000 in net losses for that year. I believe that you can kind of move the losses on for the next couple years. Again, not a professional by any means, but that's basically what I've been told. I have an accountant that handles most of my stuff, so I'm not worried about it. But if you guys are really wanting to learn more, like I said, talk to a certified tax professional and you guys will be able to learn more then. So there it is, taxes, day trading, the stock market, investing, they're all things that you need to learn, not just about trading, but you gotta learn about taxes when it comes down to the bigger picture here. At the end of the year, the last thing you wanna do is be like, oh my gosh, I've got a problem. So 
If you guys haven't already, do me one big favor. You want to learn more about day trading. You want to learn more about life and all that fun stuff. Hit that subscribe button. I will talk to you guys later on.